Hey Saki. Want to make some cool envelopes and eat a bunch of bacon? Saki. <laughs> We finally got to 30 subscribers. I'm gonna cook you some bacon for that. Let's get our supplies together. First, you'll need an envelope to deconstruct. I make a lot of greeting cards, so I'm using this standard card-sized envelope. Now, I usually like to get all of my supplies together before doing anything else, but this time is a little bit different. Before assembling the rest of your supplies, carefully deconstruct the envelope by pulling it apart along its adhesion lines. If it rips a little bit or doesn't come apart perfectly, don't worry about it. You'll still be able to use it. Once the envelope has been taken apart, smooth it out a little bit and you're ready to get everything else together. Next, you'll need a piece of sturdy cardstock, thin plastic, or some similar material to make a simple stencil. Find something thick enough to use as a stencil, but thin enough to be able to cut easily. Use your deconstructed envelope to make sure that whatever you use is big enough to make the stencil. I'm going to use this old file folder. You'll need a pencil to trace edges and a blade or scissors for cutting. A ruler isn't necessary, but it can help you fold straight edges when you're making envelopes. And if you have a bone folder, that can also make this project a little easier. You'll also need double-sided tape or glue to put the envelope together. I prefer thin double-sided tape because it's a little less messy and you don't have to wait for it to dry, but glue will work as long as the glue is safe for paper. And finally, you'll need whatever paper or card you're going to use to make envelopes. This is the really fun part of this project. I like to buy old children's books and vintage magazines at yard sales and then make envelopes out of those. Old maps work and magazines, patterned paper, posters, even old wall calendars. As long as the envelope you took apart fits onto the page, you can make an envelope from it. Now, don't go destroying a $50 coffee table book or anything like that. Just look around your house. Large images with areas of empty space work best for making envelopes. But, and here's your warning, you will probably get sidetracked while you're finding images to work with. While I was looking for pages to use for this video, I came across this incredible image of George Washington being carried off to heaven by angels. Why is Mary there? And look at the smug expression on his face. Obviously, when I found this image, I had to stop everything and post to Instagram immediately. So, make sure to give yourself enough time to get sidetracked and keep up with your social media. Once you have all your supplies together, now it's time to make some art. The first step to making homemade envelopes is to make a stencil. Now, if you only want to make one envelope, you really don't have to do this step. You could just trace your deconstructed envelope onto the page and make your envelope from there. However, it only takes a couple of minutes to make a stencil, and you're probably going to want to make more than one envelope anyway, so you might as well just make a stencil real quick. It's way easier to trace around a stencil anyway. So, lay the deconstructed envelope over the top of whatever you're going to use to make the stencil, and then carefully trace the outside of the envelope. Keep the envelope as flat as possible while you trace. Then cut out the stencil and throw away the outside scraps. That was easy, right? Now, even though you have a reusable stencil, 
keep your deconstructed envelope around while you finish this project because it will come in handy. Hey Saki. I'm cooking you some bacon in here. Do you want to come in here and get your bacon? Look, now that we have 30 subscribers, like I promised, you get three pieces of bacon. I can't give you 30 pieces of bacon. Look at me. Tell the subscribers I love you. Saki. You want that bacon? It looks like it's done. Oh, this bacon looks like it's just about done. To make an envelope, start by removing the page that you're going to use from the book, magazine, or whatever. Lay the page down on your work surface and then take your deconstructed envelope and lay it over the page. Now you're going to use the stencil to trace, but it's often easier to do the planning using your deconstructed envelope. As you position the envelope over the image, think about how the envelope will look when it's folded back up and put together. In other words, you want to think about what part of the image will be on the front of the envelope, where the top flap will be, and what direction the image is going to face. It might be helpful to fold the envelope back up briefly so that you can get an idea of what the front of the envelope will look like. And if you wanted to get really fancy, you could even use a blade to sort of cut out windows from your deconstructed envelope so that you can position things best in order to add an address later. When you have figured out how the envelope will be positioned on the page, replace the deconstructed envelope with your stencil. Then carefully trace the outside edges of the stencil and then cut the envelope out. After you're done cutting the envelope out, lay the cutout envelope onto your work surface with the image face down so that you're looking at what will be the inside of the envelope. Using a ruler or a straight edge, fold the edges of the envelope up toward you along each edge. You can use a bone folder or whatever works best for you to do this part. You'll see the envelope coming together and it's probably more awesome than even you had imagined, right? So now it's time to use glue or double-sided tape to finish the envelope. Look at the original deconstructed envelope. Fold it back up into its original shape and see where the adhesive was added on each side. That's where you're going to add adhesive to your envelope. And this is where the most mistakes can be made, frankly. Think about where you're going to add the adhesive and make sure that the adhesive won't accidentally glue the whole envelope shut. You want two thin lines of adhesive that attach the side flaps to the bottom flap. And keep in mind, if you put a thick line of glue along the seam and then press it down, the glue is going to kind of squish out into the interior of the envelope and that's the end of the game. You really don't want that. Same thing with double-sided tape if you don't position it correctly, so be careful when you're doing this part. And you're done. If you used liquid adhesive, you probably want to wait a few minutes for it to dry. And if you used double-sided tape, you're ready to go. Add a card or a letter and get ready to make somebody's day with this thing. Hi. So do you want your bacon now? Come on over and get your bacon. Now, sit down. Sit down. Now, each piece of bacon represents 10 new subscribers, okay? So, I know, I know. We're very grateful for them. Ready? Mmm, 10 subscribers. Thank you, new subscribers. Wait. Thank you, new subscribers. Hey, listen, can you tell the subscribers, I love you? Can you say, I love you? Really? You just really want that last piece of bacon, don't you? You do? 
No one could. Okay. Now, the only thing that's going to get you any more bacon, no, it's gone all right. More subscribers, more bacon. Okay. So, for my 30 subscriber spectacular, which to me is a very big deal, I wanted to do something special. So, I decided to incorporate this new little section called Next Level It, where I show you how you could get even more elaborate with a project if you had more time or better supplies or whatever. So, when it comes to making the homemade envelopes even more special, you really can do a lot. Um, you probably don't want to add any dimensional adhesives or trinkets to the outside of an envelope because those could get destroyed or jammed up in the giant post office machines, whatever. But you can add all kinds of flat elements like foil or ink or embossing powder, watercolor elements, stamps, all kinds of things. You can die cut an address window before putting the envelope together and then put a little piece of acetate on the inside of the envelope to make a fancy address window. You could use address labels to add addresses to darker envelopes and you can use a variety of hand lettering and calligraphy techniques to add addresses to an envelope. You can buy fancy stamps in smaller denominations to decorate envelopes even more. And I don't want to get too philosophical about it, of course I never do, but I really believe that the realest currency we have to spend is time. And whenever you spend time making something with your own hands for somebody, it sends that person a message that they're valuable. And that's a powerful reminder that anybody can use. And I bet you end up feeling pretty great about being such a force for good in the world. So, one more thing. You can also use the techniques you learned today to recreate any envelope that you have. I've made tiny little gift enclosure envelopes, bank envelopes, square envelopes, pockets, all kinds of stuff this way. All you have to do is deconstruct the original, make yourself a little stencil, and then go to town. You can check out my Etsy shop to see some of the tiny little gift cards that I make, and I'll put a link to that below. Well, that's it for the TIFCO 30 Subscriber Spectacular. Thanks for partying with me and Saki on this auspicious occasion. We're very glad you could join us. Do you think you'll try to make some homemade envelopes? What are you going to use to make yours? Tell me in the comments. You can also tell me in the comments what kind of creative projects you'd like me to attempt in the future. Remember, nothing with fire. And hey, if you're not already a subscriber, you can help me grow this channel by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Remember, for every new subscriber this channel gets, Saki gets a piece of delicious maple bacon. Thanks for watching, and I'm out like that.